Here we go. Uh, 20 seconds till the uh, preview image. Looks like a plane literally just crossed right in front of my target, so we might see that in there. But I think we need to do the auto stretch. Oh my. As many of you know, I tend to do things the hard way more often than I should. This includes everything from a manual three-star alignment to carrying my astrophotography gear in and out of the garage night after night. It's because I'm old school. When I started this hobby back in 2011, there weren't nearly as many dedicated astrophotography products as there are now to automate the imaging experience. However, new devices have entered the scene that allow me to do what I love most, capture more images. That means less time setting up and connecting hardware and more time actually collecting light on my deep sky target, even when I'm in the house asleep. Perhaps one of the greatest examples of the technological evolution of this hobby is the ASI Air from ZWO. It aims to provide the deep sky astrophotography world with a portable, user-friendly experience in a single package. Basically, the ASI Air's job is to handle taking all of your pictures. They're all going to get recorded on the internal storage in the device. No laptop computer here and connections for auto-guiding, it handles that as well. I'll control the device using my little tablet here. I'll go in the house and sit down. You can even control the mount with it. The ZWO ASI Air isn't the only product like this in the marketplace. The StellarMate has a loyal following. The Prima Luce Labs Eagle Core is a popular device like this, but the ASI Air aims to be the most mainstream, commercially available product with a straightforward user experience that's great for beginners without a technological background. I've got my ASI Air mounted on top of the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box. There was a nice flat spot on the Esprit 100 here, so I've got the Velcro tape on the telescope with the Pocket Power Box and then the ASI Air on top of that. They're both really close to the same size actually, both very lightweight, pretty much weightless, not adding any extra weight to the mount. So to power the device, I've got the AC adapter plugged into uh, an outlet for the pocket power box, and then I've got um, a kit, the proper cable running in from the pocket power box to the ASI Air. It's actually kind of cool, it's a USB Type-C connection here, and this is the adapter from USB to, uh, to traditional power source. Now because the ASI Air is completely Wi-Fi, it means that you don't have to have a direct connection to your computer to control it and uh, interface with it and get your photos. So I found my, uh, I'm an Android user myself, I found my little Galaxy S7 screen to be a little small to control this, uh, and I felt like it was time to get a tablet anyway to control my uh, planetarium software and other all my other astronomy apps, YouTube videos. Uh, the ASI Air has a dedicated app in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So I'll use this little eight inch tablet to, uh, to control the device. The device itself is just a Raspberry Pi computer with the dedicated software designed by ZWO for astrophotography. There's USB 2.0 ports, four of them on the one side, along with a direct connect ethernet cable if you want a direct internet connection. Uh, obviously most people want to use it uh, for Wi-Fi. The power source over here, there's also an HDMI cable spot, and the power source is the USB Type-C, which is uh, 
funny enough, the same connection on my, my new tablet and with the uh, my guide camera here. So I'm seeing those more and more, the USB Type-C cables. These ones are good because they can go in either way. It's really amazing what this little thing can do considering the price. It's under $200 US. And uh, so you can do plate solving when it's connected to your mount. You can, of course, capture your images, run an imaging sequence, cool your camera, set the binning, all of the camera control like I normally do on my laptop with APT. Auto guiding, it'll show you a graph, so no more PhD guiding. It has its own auto guiding software in there. Uh, so pretty incredible to think that that's all happening in this little, little box here. Here you can see the two cameras that I'm using with the ASI Air. The ASI 290mm Mini, an awesome little guide camera compatible with the ASI Air. And then the 294MC Pro, my primary imaging camera. A one-shot color, cooled CMOS camera. Yeah, so those are the two cameras. Everything matches all nice and red. That's what it's all about, right? So if you're wondering how this is all going to come together here using the app for Wi-Fi control, I'm going to open the app up here. Here it is, ASI Air, and uh, I've already set it all up so it's going to find it no problem. And it's going to recognize it, uh, I'm going to connect to it, it gives you a little password uh, on the device itself, you're going to see it come up here, connected, now we can go back, okay so it's all good, and it actually recognizes uh, the ZWO cameras that I've got on there, the guide camera, the 290mm Mini and the main camera, the 294. The mount, I'm using the ST4 cable on camera from the guide camera into, uh, into the mount. No filter wheel yet. And uh, I've entered in my main scope focal length and guide scope focal length. And now we can get into the software itself. Here's a look at the uh, user interface of the uh, primary screen here where you can control everything. Uh, along the top here, you'll see your connections, primary imaging camera, guide camera, telescope, filter wheel if you've got one, and storage. Along the side here is where you do stuff like control your binning, uh, run your imaging sequence, uh, the exposure length, uh, so there's five minutes there. Uh, the temperature of the camera, the cooler's off right now, plate solving, guiding, debearing, histogram, all available on the main screen here. So we're in preview mode right now, but if I go into the uh, auto run section, this is where you set up your imaging sequence. So you can see uh, this is my sequencing plan here for light frames, 300 second exposures, binning two by two. Uh, we're gonna take three of 30 of them, and these are light frames. Uh, so we'll say okay there. This is where we control that. I've got my target name, which is gonna be IC1805. So my shooting schedule. Now that's set there, you can see frame zero of 30, when I pl press play here, that's gonna start that imaging sequence. It's as easy as that. And then you can actually preview your, your images here uh, in the image previewer. The files will get stored on the device itself in the internal micro SD card, which is 32 gigabytes. I know I'm not gonna get a lot of imaging time done with this ASI Air tonight because the forecast shows that the clouds are rolling in basically as soon as it gets dark. So my hope is that I get 45 minutes would be great. Uh, I'll probably shoot the Heart Nebula IC1805 again just because it's nice and high near the zenith right now. I can quickly fire away some subs uh, with my F STC Astro Duo narrowband filter in there and uh, just hope for the best. I want to get uh, add some time to uh, that project. So at the end of the video, I'll share IC1805, which is uh, it's kind of a cropped in version of the Heart Nebula. But uh, anyways, that's the plan. So far, so good. I mean, usually the West tells the story of what you're gonna get. I can see um, when the clouds just start to creep in over there, I know I'm gonna get that in about a half an hour and I still don't really see anything down there. So uh, let's hope for the best. All right, it's crunch time. It's getting dark and it's still clear for now. So let's see if I can uh, get some imaging done with this uh, ZWASI Air. Wish me luck. All right, here we go. Everything's all uh, ready to go. Run my imaging sequence. It's uh, a section of clouds have come by, but they're on their way out. And I've got a clear patch behind it. Here you can see the uh, looping image of uh, the guide camera, the 290mm Mini. And uh, you can see a few clouds there, but it is connected to the guide camera. This will be my first time auto-guiding without using PHD ever. Um, so. 
This is a one second loop. We can look at a graph. Uh, we haven't uh, started guiding on a star yet. I would imagine it's this one. <laughs> Got lucky, okay? It looks like it's going through a calibration process right here. So it's just connected through the ST4 cable on the camera to the mount. Look at that. I am auto guiding with something other than PhD for the first time ever. So the ASI Air is running the 290 guide camera and there's the graph there. It actually doesn't look so bad considering the clouds in the sky. Okay, so I've got my auto guiding going and now I'm going to start my imaging sequence. So we'll go to the uh, primary camera, choose my settings here. So it's got the 294 MC Pro focal length of the scope. I'm in a rush here <laughs> trying to get some images before the clouds totally destroy everything. I'm going to go with a gain of 120 medium target temperature and now in my, I'm just going to set it to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So that's cooling. I'm going to go into uh, to set an imaging sequence. So auto run, choose my settings here, light frames, just because we've got such limited time. I'm going to do some two minute subs on the Heart Nebula. I'm going to take 30 of them, bin two by two. These are light frames. And I am going to just start running that. I'll show you the preview image in 102 seconds. Here we go. Uh, 20 seconds till the uh, preview image. Looks like a plane literally just crossed right in front of my target. So we might see that in there. Uh, with this bright light shining on me, I can't tell how cloudy it is up there. I don't see any stars. Not a good sign. Uh, let's see what the preview image looks like. Okay, so there it is there. I can see some stars. Not super impressive, but I think we need to do the auto stretch. Oh my, did you see that? Holy, look at that. Is that unreal or what? No laptop, auto guiding image capturing this little box and my tablet. That was like magic when I turned the auto stretch on. So there's my first sub, two minutes on the Heart Nebula. Unreal, through the clouds. Very happy with that. So I'm on sub number two of 30. Uh, graph looks pretty decent considering the clouds. And uh, I am just thrilled with that. Very cool. Devices like the ASI Air aren't for everybody. Maybe you're just more than happy using your imaging laptop and your computer and doing things the way you always have. If it's working well for you, why change, right? Uh, I can definitely relate to that. I will say, however, I can confirm that the ASI Air does exactly what it sets out to do, which is simplifies the process. It's reliable, it works, it's very straightforward. I was a little hesitant at first to uh, change things up because I thought, you know what, if there's any hiccups at all, if I lose connection and it stops capturing, or if it takes me longer uh, to use this or anything, definitely was not the case. I was able to get up and running quickly and easily, and uh, I didn't even look at the user manual. I figured it out on my own. Uh, it's nice to control things on an app. I love using apps on my smartphone and tablet for everything. So just a very cool device for people that are into this kind of thing that have been looking to get a mini onboard computer for their rig, Raspberry Pi computer. You've got to check out the ASI Air. The software and the compatibility with the ZWO ASI cameras is phenomenal. And the guiding, I am really impressed. I just, I don't know what I expected, but I've always used PhD2 guiding and, you know, really tweaked those settings. And this right out of the box, I'm seeing sharp stars in my two minute subs. I don't even, I left everything default with that guide camera and the ST4 cable. So that's working well. And uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a thing or two about the ASI Air. Thank you to High Point Scientific for lending it to me and giving me a chance to review it. Uh, you can check out my full post on astrobackyard.com. Thanks so much for watching, everyone.